Joan Oliver. Of course, you know her as Rita, but now she's Joan. Welcome. I Welcome to our my, show. Yes, I changed my name in honor of John Oliver from last week tonight because I am in love with him. And as you know, so. I changed my name to Jonna Stewart because I think I look and am just as funny as John Stewart. Yes. Yep. Th those are our idols. <laughs> yes. And we will they strive with our, with our meager talent to impress them. Yes, or impress you, hopefully, because they might be really hard to impress. <laughs> right, yes, you know. and they're probably busy, too. So. Yeah, but you know, if they aren't busy, they're welcome to join us on the show. Oh, yes. Anytime. Skype, yeah, through Google Hangouts, Skype, whatever. Yep. We, we strive to, you know, get there. Yes, we will get there. Yes. In more than one way, I'm yes, sure. So will. tonight on our show, uh, we have very special guests with us. We have invited two guests on our show. They actually have their own show here on RVTV called Girl Talk. But why I invited them onto our show is because one of the people sitting next to me, Carol Voison, she's a city council member here in Ashland. She's been vocal about the what I call Shakespeare versus Shakespeare controversy that's been brewing in Ashland the last oh, week or so, maybe two weeks. Um, I will let Carol give you a little bit of background on that. And sitting next to Carol is also from Girl Talk, her sidekick, just like I have a sidekick, Carol's got a sidekick, <laughs> Regina Ayers. And um, Regina will tell you a little bit about her show after Carol and I talk a little bit about Shakespeare versus Shakespeare. So Carol, for people that don't know what has happened with the Oregon Shakespeare Festival coming up against the owner of Shakespeare and Company Bookstore, and a little bit of that controversy that's been brewing. Can you give us a little background on that? Why don't you tell me what you know, and then I'll fill it in. I'll tell you what I know, and I'll tell you what I know at home. What I know is, and the reason that I invited Carol on our show, is because she had been quoted in the paper as saying she would love to have the Oregon Shakespeare, Fest Oregon Shakespeare Festival directors, the executive director and artistic director, and any of the actors who have some hurt feelings about the banned books display in Judy Honore's window at the Shakespeare and Company bookstore, she would offer her council chambers and her mediation skills to sit down and have them just talk it out. Come yeah, on, people. Yeah. Why can't we all just get along? Why do people have hurt feelings over banned books? This doesn't make any sense. Can't we all just get along and have mm. fun? This is Ashland, for gosh sakes. It escalated you know? in an unfortunate way, and the early work that was good all got undone, it seems. Mm -hmm. All right, here we are trying to unpack racism in this small community that we all love, and we end up brewing this controversy to the extent of now the Oregon Shakespeare Festival says they will no longer shop at Judy Honore's store. Now, how does that help local business? How does that help our economy here in Ashland? How does that help anything? How is that a solution? I think that Carol had a good solution. Just let's sit down and talk it out like human beings and adults. That's right. Let's face stop being face. in high school. <clears throat> and, and so I appreciate that you came you. forth with this and said, hey, you know, I'll, I'll offer you my, my skills and, and, and my surroundings. Well, it wasn't so much my skills. What I would do, what I said I would do, would I would bring in a professional mediator to work because mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I, I could do some of that, but because uh, I, I was trained as a pastor, um, United Methodist, so I know how to do some mediation, but this is pretty serious. Mm -hmm. So I would want a professional mediator to meet with these two women and whomever they wanted to bring mm -hmm. for them to look for some common ground because you're right, there has, there's common ground, I know there is. Absolutely. Uh, the common ground is basically none of us want to participate or endorse racism in any manner or form. Mm -hmm. And that we know, I'm sure, we could all agree on. So where, where are we falling apart? Where is the difference? What's happened? Right. And I would really like to see these two women just sit down and talk with a mediator who would make sure that they're hearing each other. That's what a mediator does. Mm -hmm. And there's so many good mediators in Ashland, I have no doubt that we could find someone. Mm -hmm. So I did write an email to both of the women, and I... And those women would be the uh, executive director of the Shakespeare Cynthia Festival. Ryder Cynthia Ryder and, and Judy Honoré, the owner of And Shakespeare I invited and them to, um, that I would pull together <clears throat> a place and uh, get a mediator, and they could bring whomever they wanted, and we would just, it would be all confidential, 
Oh, and darn. I was hoping we'd, you know. Nope, 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 nope. The, the <laughs> we'll have it on our show. Why yeah, not? Yeah, yeah. We could bring that here. Out. Yeah, we'll act sure, out the whole sure. scenario. Yeah. <laughs> and then everything would be confidential, and then they could, if they wanted to, um, present a news release that would be a joint news release oh. or separate uh, or whatever. But I just said, let's just, you know, sit down. We're adults. And our community's small, and we it's unnecessary to have this kind of of uh, resentment in in mm -hmm. our community. We just we shouldn't have it here. Mm -hmm. So um, that's not going to happen, though. It's not going to happen, and why? Why not? Uh, <clears throat> Judy uh, said that she she could probably do it any time, any place, and um, Cynthia said that. She was open to it. M we have a live on. jungle back here, so yeah, just ignore the moving plants. Oh, oh my uh, gosh, I think that's I planted an Audrey too, actually, I think back here <laughs> to uh, eat my guests when it's, it's hungry. And we have so, some marijuana growing back. Oh here. yeah, <laughs> you weren't supposed to see that, but you know. <laughs> so uh, sorry, I'm you, sorry, Carol. You just have to get used to you I'm, know my I'm, uh, I, sort of an ADD broadcaster. <laughs> Uh, I just figured that out, yeah. <laughs> yeah. kind of like some of my students. So, um, Cynthia Ju said. Well, mm -hmm. first Judy said she she would be available, and then Cynthia said um, that she had had other offers for people who would want to uh, provide mediation or do the mediation, oh. hmm. and that she said she would not accept my offer mm -hmm. because I took a stand, and oh. at least in the article, it seemed that I was. Um, uh, taking the side of Judy Honoré, hmm. and so she said she would not accept it. Interesting. I didn't so, get that at all. But she did say I didn't either. And I that seemed very impartial to me. Thank you. I, so, you. And you were being impartial, correct? I, I was I, trying to be, yes. Uh, so what happened is basically she said um, no, but th that in the future she might be doing it. And, you know, she does have... She has every right to say, if, if that's how she perceived me in the article, she wouldn't want me to mediate but I'm not I wasn't going to be the one who to mediate mm -hmm. sure and I guess I had gotten that wrong as well so I apologize that you would not okay. be the mediator no, 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 it would no, no. be a, professional, bring in a mediator. professional mediator right and so and that's where we're at I one thing I don't understand about all this is I I think that Judy's purpose in putting that display of banned books together was to bring in awareness uh, of you know we don't want to have Banned books. We don't want to be told what we can and cannot read. That's right. We should have. That's we right. should be able to um, understand that this was happening, mm -hmm. still is happening. There's still books that are mm -hmm. not read in That's certain right. places in this country, and she was taking a stand against racism. Really, she was. And that. How did that happen? That the Shakespeare Festival then accused her of well, being there racist. Some, <clears throat> there were some. There were some African American actors who walked by. Mm -hmm the um, display and they felt that it was that she was being very insensitive to african-american actors mm -hmm. uh, for two reasons one it was she had um, wizard of oz right and right next to it she had um, black sambo right little black sambo. little black sambo and i did pull some of uh, images of these books i don't know if we can get them wow we have all kinds of oompa loompas behind the set today it's great <laughs> Ever seen those Troompa Loompas on Jimmy Kimmel? Oh, I wish we had those here. Well, our budget won't allow it, but it would be fun. Or Munchkins, like on the OSF production. Didn't you love the Munchkins with their blow-up suits? I'm going to see it at the end of this month. Oh, I'm so. sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I have seen many pictures. Of, we should um, wear one of those one of these times. We, we have a little our little blow-up suits and do the show. Oh, that would be really fun. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, maybe we could roll each other <laughs> around the set. That would be great. Uh, but I, just, I don't have images yet, but I'm sure I will. I wanted to show The Wizard of Oz, as you were saying, next to Little Black Sambo. Yes. And I, and, and I think the, the, the offense came, <clears throat> the African-American actors felt that Little Black Sambo that looked like um, blackface. And I huh. think that's what upset them. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. immediately they mm -hmm. went in and they explained to Judy that they were offended by it. And Judy said, okay, let's rearrange it. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> they went with her, mm -hmm. and they rearranged it. And she thought everything was fine. Then and she they even told her that they were happy with that, right? I think so. According to the article, that's what it said. Yes. I wasn't up 
present for any of this, well, so I don't know, this is paper reporting. Right. And that's what I'm referring to as well, as well as a conversation with Judy. And so Judy said then Cynthia asked her to come to her office. And then, oh, really? Yes. Okay. And then she, they had a conversation and they agreed to disagree. Uh, okay. And that's when followed, that was followed by a letter. And in that letter, Cynthia said that she was asking her staff to boycott her store because mm -hmm. of Judy's insensitivity to the issue of offending their actors, their staff. I see. Hmm. And yet she was just trying to make it right. She already had she, put the display she did in a different make, order. She did, make an, she did make an effort, yes. And then I guess what happened was she decided, well, since they're going to be upset anyways, I'm just going to put the books back how they were. I, I don't think she put them back like they were. Oh, okay. I asked her that, and she said no. She oh, said I did not paper put them got back. Paper wrong, probably. Yeah, uh, that happens. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, she told me happens. she didn't put them back like they were. And so now, now what? Do you think it will just go on like this? And I know there's people that are saying they're purposely going into Judy's store to shop there that maybe wouldn't have before because they want to show support for her as a local business owner. And then, of course, there's people that won't go in there because they want to show their support for the OSF actors. That's right. Uh, Judy is fearful that her business will lose a great deal of income, of revenue, because of this. Sure. And she's very worried about that. Uh, however, she does have uh, 20 pages of signatures mm -hmm. wow. of people who signed a petition wow. uh, supporting her. And so I, I don't know where this is going to go. I just wish... Um, Cynthia would contact some of those other folks that had contacted her mm -hmm. and said they would be willing to offer some mediation. I just wish um, that would happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't want, because we don't want anybody to be hurt. We don't want the no. OSF actors to have hurt feelings, but we don't no. want Judy's business to suffer. Right. And, you know, it's, it just seems like it would be, it seems easy to resolve. It does. does it not? It oh, does. Wonderful. We have images. So here's Judy's storefront. Uh, there's a display of books as it, as That's not were. Judy's storefront. No. Oh, no, this is Bloomsbury, isn't it? Yeah. That's what it looks like. Read oh. real books. Uh, that's Read real books. Sorry, that image is just to throw you off. Just to see how smart <laughs> that was <laughs> John Oliver could be. And if you believed us, then I caught on. put down that joint. Yeah. Now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a nice image, but not the one that I was uh, hoping you would see. I, I, Black Sambo is kind of a cool image, so hopefully we'll get that one oh, up there. There we go. There's there little Black is. Sambo. And do you remember when I was a kid, I used to eat at the Sambo's Diner all the time. It was oh, one yes. of my favorite places to go. I grew up in L.A. And I would eat at Sambo's Restaurant. I don't know if you remember. But I'm from L.A., so we had Sambo's there. Mm -hmm. And we used to have those placemats, the paper placemats and the crowns they give you when you come in. And you would color little Black Sambo. Now I always made him green, so I... I never saw him as black. I guess it's just my own thing. I, I thought he should be little green Sambo, but then they have contests who, you know, who colored the best little black Sambo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember those places. Yeah, they later, of course, had to change their name. Um, that that restaurant became a Baker Square. So I don't oh, know. Is that I think all the Sambos ended up going. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I think they were purchased. I'm not really sure, but I love that place, Sambos. I never expected to see actually little black sambo there but i always hoped he would be there like he was a celebrity like i always hope he'd just kind of say hey how are you doing your pancakes today and mm -hmm. you know i'm like oh my gosh there's a little black sambo i can't believe it i want to get his autograph but yeah. it never happened who was yeah. little black sambo well he was this little character from these stories mm -hmm. and he would you know he lived in the jungle and he'd encounter jungle creatures like these tigers here but look mm -hmm. they're so cute and harmless and they was he in african I, was this I, in africa I, I, yes, in the African jungle. That's where it's all. African African American, and the, I remember one story. A tiger is not the tiger was not his friend. Was this it? tiger was stalking him. Yes, and do you he, remember the tiger's name? No, oh, I don't either. I. We need some help here. Trivia. Dial in trivia. You know the name of the tiger. <laughs> and it'll come to me. But little black one. sambo. I think this is how it goes. It's been a long time. The, he gets the tiger to run around the tree. Yes, chasing yeah, chasing him. He turns the tiger into, into butter. butter. Yes. Doesn't he? Yes. And so Little Black Sambo's the hero. He's smart. Right. But if we look at that picture, it does look like blackface. It looks very strange. Right. Does is that the actual book? That's like not monkey. the book I saw. No, I, the book is different. I don't know where this image came this from. Is, 
That's not but the, the book, book type. The book picture looks much no more normal. Yeah, the than black. This. The yeah. picture she had was actually the face was all black. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and actually at the restaurant he was a little squatter and fatter and mm -hmm. stuff. But you know, <laughs> uh, but I'm sure he's just based on that. But you know, I, I could see where this would be offensive, of course, without any explanation, which I think was part of the problem originally. There was no explanation about the display in her window of what, the, it, what the, it was representing. I thought there was a little explanation about I banned books and why they were banned. And, and um, books are banned for all sorts of reasons. That's I right. Mean, we have racism sort of bumping up here against censorship. Yes. And I mean, it's, it would make a great essay. I'm also a writing teacher to look at this and write about it. It's, there's a lot to think about here. You yeah, Huff Finn. Mark Twain, both That's of those, mm -hmm. yeah, those were um, banned. Yeah, because of the relationship between a black man and a white boy, and you know. And that. books are banned for all sorts of reasons, mm -hmm. and yeah. And we actually have an image of one of the banned books, which is uh, The Rabbit Wedding. Oh, yeah. It looks adorable. It's just a black rabbit marrying, marrying a, a white, white rabbit. rabbit. Oh, that's cute. It is cute. That's Why was that cute. banned? This was banned in Alabama. Yeah. Uh, according to Judy, this was banned in Alabama, and uh, because a black rabbit in Alabama should not wear it, marry a white rabbit. And you know what would happen? They'd have gray rabbits. Spotted. Yeah. That'd or, be nice. Or one in or one in four of their offspring would be a white rabbit because it would carry the recessive genes. As you know, one in four. And we know carry the recessive gene, and then what happens? Are they racist against their own black? But we father? know black and white rabbits do get married. Mm -hmm. They do. <laughs> yes, they do all the time. They have lots of bunnies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm a huge fan <laughs> of, of um, Quincy Jones' daughter, Rashida Jones. Oh, yes. She's a wonderful actress. And, uh, you know, she's a, one of those just multiracial, beautiful people mm -hmm. who's funny and talented. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Would be also cool to have on the show if you're around or she's not doing anything. <laughs> yes. Just, you know, give us a call. Uh, we need to put our phone number on our... <laughs> yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, 1-800-DRINK-WINE. That's my number. Um, so I, I, this image, you know, this was banned in Alabama, and this was also in her window. In her window. Sorry, window and I think it makes a nice statement as to, you know, what's wrong with this kind of thing. It's just that it would be an awareness that people would say, why would this be banned? You know, mm -hmm. Why is this so outrageous mm -hmm. in Alabama? How can Alabama be so behind the times? But they are. And so just bringing an awareness to, to that right. fact, right? Mm -hmm. Just like Huck Finn would as well. Yes. Um, we, did get, we did grab an image of the Wizard of Oz cast mm. at my request, and uh, the Wiz cast, and because I Wiz. just wanted to show The Wiz, which is based on The Wizard of Oz. Which um, is also a banned book. Yes. The, yes. the Wizard of Oz is banned. Do yes, you know it was. why? Religion. The evangelicals oh. did not want uh, the wizard to uh, be honored the, behind the, black the screen. black magic kind of thing. Black yeah. magic, right. So oh, it wow. was the religious issue. Interesting. And there's okay. politics behind uh, Baum's interpretation. I, mm -hmm. I, he was a, quite the feminist, wasn't he? He was raised in a home full of feminist women, I hmm. believe. And there is some feminist leanings in this book. I mean, yes. the, the true As people of power in this book are the witches. All women. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're all women, mm -hmm. and the man is a faker. That's mm -hmm. right. right. Yeah, and the medicine show men, you know, who mm -hmm. just would, you know, snake oil men in that, uh, in the books, mm -hmm. were not good role models, and the women were good role models, and Auntie M was, you know, the, uh, the matriarch. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Dorothy just trying to find her way as becoming a woman yeah. in, mm -hmm. you know, in all these lands, in all the different lands of Oz. There are many mm -hmm. lands of Oz uh, that were four corners of, you know, they were like the four corners of the world. I have read the books. Mm -hmm. um, and they did have to actually, she actually wore silver shoes. Yes, in the book, yes, not, she wore in silver the book, shoes, not yes. Ruby slippers, mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> which was a commentary on uh, silver being valuable. And huh. in that time, this was the time of the Industrial Revolution, and the yellow brick road was actually supposed to be gold. Oh. It would be, oh. you know, the road paved of gold, and it was the railroad, represented the railroad, because that really was 
industry at that time. The hmm. railroad ran everything, mm -hmm. especially here. You know, here in Ashland, they had the depot come through, and mm -hmm. that created commerce and it created an economy. And the same with Medford. Medford would be nothing except it had the railroad running through it, and it became a railroad boom town. Hmm. So I find, you know, Frank Baum's stories are still topical today, and I happen to be Very a good. huge fan of his stories, yes, and there are mm -hmm. many, many of them if you read them. So there's more than The Wizard of Oz? Oh, yes. yeah. Oh. And they have Dorothy. a lot of interesting psychological things going on. The one, Ozma of Oz. Uh, Ozma is this, so, I mean, he's looking at gender back in the 20s, you know, in the 30s. Ozma of Oz, who becomes queen, uh, empress, after, you know, the, the whiz takes his balloon out of town, um, was enchanted <laughs> to be like a Mossman. boy. Yeah, <laughs> she was enchanted to be a boy, and they're all looking for her. They don't know where she is, and then she becomes a girl at the end. So it's this very interesting... Mm -hmm. um, Transgender. Gender. Oh, yeah. In the 30s. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. For sure. Uh, which, you know, totally current today. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, just, I just want to point out in this image that, you know, Christiana is, uh, is the whiz, is the lion in the whiz, and, mm -hmm. you know, she's my girl. We've been, she's, she's the one who started the unpacking racism yes. um, oh. forums here in Ashland because mm -hmm. she had some epithets thrown at her uh, in the railroad district here. We did want to ask you about your mayoral uh, candidacy coming mm -hmm. up. You're going to be running for mayor. Correct. And we wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about that or to that or tell everybody what you would like what you want them to know about it uh, we had a few questions prepared for you as well okay so you know. i am running um for mayor and there are three other candidates mm -hmm. so i'll be the only woman in in those candidates and we all know ladies that the best woman is going to win. Right. right. Absolutely. It's kind of that kind of election. It's here. that kind of election. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. telling you, that's for sure. So why don't, why don't you tell me what your questions are? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, and this question comes from uh, a very learned person on our staff here, and not me personally, but he came up with this, and I think it's a great question. Okay. Why would you step out of your council seat to become mayor when the councilors get to vote and the mayor doesn't? Mm. That is a good question. Uh, oh, hi, hi, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pull that. Do you have to put that, that on there? Huh? Huh? Get him. But you know what? Get him out of here. Joan has this fantastic <laughs> of, uh, what would I call it, impersonation of Donald Trump. She does. You, you know oh. what it is. Yes. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Just makes me laugh every time. But that's her, that's her <laughs> Donald Trump impersonation. I'm working on a Hillary one myself. Oh, good. Something like this, but I, I haven't really gotten it down yet. So, you have to you know. work on it a little bit. Yeah, I need to work on it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what are your questions? I'm running because I really feel that um, we need a change. Uh, and every anyone who's running for public office should explain why they're running. Yes, and, and so, everyone says they need a change. So what would you like to have change around here? Oh, there are lots Ashland. of things, yes. Um, first of all, we need a new management style. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor brings that. Mm -hmm. And my style would be one of openness, transparency, and accountability. Mm -hmm. um, and that's different from our current mayor. Uh -huh. So I would bring that in spades. And that means that I would invite um, and be sure that public input is one of the major components of the communication between uh, citizens mm -hmm. and the council and staff. So the people know, we know, those who are in elected office will know what citizens have to say about any issue. Now, I have attended those meetings. You haven't. We have five minutes I left. Have. I just thought I'd let you Minutes know. or oh. seconds? Five minutes? That's lots of time. Okay. <laughs> so this, I, this is, this is yes. stretched out into a nice, juicy interview with depth and <laughs> Yes. I and mean, texture. I like the name of your show, Girl Talk. I mean, we are the women-only news network, which, you know, I also like. But yeah, we need uh, to collaborate. Tell us about yes. the Girl Talk. Well, no, yeah, you need to talk about it. Okay. okay. We'll do two minutes of girl talk after we talk okay. two minutes of okay. mayoral candidacy. Okay. Yeah. We think that's important, too. Both both our things are okay. important. How but do you feel about what happened to Redwood uh, with the police takedown and, and everything that's going on in the Oh, plaza? I did see that video. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. we, um, we actually showed it on our show last, the oh, last did episode. You? Mm -hmm. yes. Episode 17 of Sun, <laughs> which became One, which is how we had our first episode tonight yeah, the of One. one. Anyhow, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> just, we're just a couple of magpies. Just, 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 just like SNL, those two. Those yeah. 
<laughs> those um, those Italian ladies. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> oh, oh. I also do Linda Richman. <laughs> we can talk about daughters and dogs. Oh, yeah, do yeah. that all night. Oh, yeah. Anyhow, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> How can I follow that? <laughs> We want the juice, though. We want the juice. So Redwood, anyhow, Redwood we, is we're, we're very pro-police. We believe that the Ashton police, so my. you know, um, have been given a lot of other tasks to do other than the jobs that they probably need to be doing sometimes because they're getting called out to these other That's correct. things that are happening. That's and right. we don't know if this call to the plaza that day was sort of... They were baited. We're not sure. It no, looked, no, they were not baited. They were not baited. I, but, know, but I know that for sure. Biome was standing there in the background just watching everything. So I was a little suspicious of that. Um, I don't know if you saw him. You know, Biome, he ran for mayor too. Yeah, he's running again. He's running again, I'm yeah. sure. Oh, sure. Okay, but let's let her talk. we got to hear this. Okay, so Redwood is um, was arrested, mm -hmm. and he is now going to uh, Jackson County Circuit Court. Mm -hmm. He has three or four charges against him. Mm -hmm. The good thing is this. He has a public defendant who is Ooh. very, very good okay. and is looking at everything in depth. Uh -huh. um, and there's a portion of that video that I just talked to the police chief the other day, a portion of that video that we don't have. And yes. so that's what we're trying to find. Excellent. That's we want to find that, find that too, part but... because at that point they said that Redwood said that the police officer came up to him and poked him in the chest to get away. And I never saw that on the video. And it wasn't on the video. Yeah. So there is, however, an eyewitness who was there who mm -hmm. took the video who said the police officer did do that. Mm -hmm. So we need to get the body cam. Might have been pointing and not poking, and that would also be uh, something that yeah, we, they could we talk don't know. about. We, in court. we need to, and it's going to go to court, mm -hmm. it's going to be a jury. So we'll see what happens. Okay, we'll and see. And he what has happens. a good public um, defendant. So we'll see what we'll, we'll see. see what happens. But the larger issue seems to me to be the busking. You know, people begging, we only have about or, a minute, oh, minute and a half. entertaining, okay, ahead, ask asking for money in the plaza, and that there's some sort of dampening effect via city ordinances. Ordinances. Yeah. There are Is five that, or six ordinances yeah. that. Uh, in my opinion, criminalize the homeless. And now that we've had them for almost three or four months, I have to say that the suffering that's causing is immense. Mm, it's, that's I just have to tell you, I'm the suffering about. they this is are causing is immense. another show, and we have only one minute left. Yes. I just want to say, there's Iron Mike. He's erect and very happy about that, that he's back in the plaza. And uh, Regina, is there anything you like to say? And I got 30 seconds. It's, it's not, not Mike. Mike. It's not Mike. It's not Mike. It's not Mike. The Pioneer guy. It's Pioneer Mike. Pioneer it's not Mike. Iron Mike. Not so Iron listen, Mike. Girl Mike. Talk is, um, <laughs> has been on the air almost a year here on Rogue Valley TV, oh, Carol yes. and I, uh -huh. interview. And our next episode, uh, we're going to be filming on the 27th. We're going to be interviewing the city recorder. It's going to be the topic is women in government mm -hmm. and also nice. the mayor of talent. So those are our guests okay. that we will be uh, interviewing next. I'm sorry to say we're out of time, but we thank our guests for being here today. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next episode of the Women Only News Network. Thank Stay you. classy, Southern Oregon. See you next time. <laughs>